Today on the 50th episode of Engineering Newswire, <laughs> brought to you by Mauser Electronics, the electronic components distributor with the widest selection of the newest products, we're digging ditches with Big Bertha, using self-cleaning super glass, making a mini Mona, and electrifying hydrogels to make soft robots. You've heard about soft robotics, right? These things. Well now researchers at North Carolina State University have further developed this robotic research by using hydrogels, a polymer substance that is almost entirely water. The researchers inject copper ions into the hydrogels and then use electrical fields to manipulate the form. The copper ions are positively charged and bond with negatively charged sites on the polymer network, making these soft robots just a bit stiffer and more robust. By targeting specific areas of the hydrogel shapes, the researchers were able to maneuver the form. The more ions they injected, the further the shape would bend. With the right amount of injected ions and a more durable structure, the researchers were able to manipulate objects with the hydrogel bots. The concept of using electrical fields to drive actuation isn't new in the realm of soft robotics, but according to the paper, this is the first time electromechanically active electrodes have been used. Since hydrogels are made mostly of water, they have the potential to be biodegradable, if designed in such a way, making these gelatin robots ideal for medical and drug delivery applications. A team from the Wies Institute for Biologically Inspired Engineering at Harvard University and Harvard School of Engineering and Applied Sciences reported a new transparent bio-inspired coating that makes ordinary glass tough, self-cleaning, and incredibly slippery. The new coating builds on a technology called Slippery Liquid Infused Porous Surfaces, or SLIPS, and could be used to create durable, scratch-resistant lenses for eyeglasses, self-cleaning windows, improved solar panels, and new medical diagnostic devices. To create a slips-like coating, the researchers corral a collection of tiny spherical particles of polystyrene on a flat glass surface like a collection of ping-pong balls. They pour liquid glass on them until the balls are more than half buried in glass. After the glass solidifies, they burn away the beads, leaving a network of craters that resembles a honeycomb. Then they coat that honeycomb with the same liquid lubricant to create a tough but slippery coating. These coated glass slides repel the variety of liquids including water, octane, wine, olive oil, and ketchup. And like slips, the coating reduced the adhesion of ice to a glass slide by 99%. Keeping materials frost-free is important because adhered ice can take down power lines, decrease the energy efficiency of cooling systems, delay airplanes, and lead buildings to collapse. The world's most famous painting can now be found on the world's smallest canvas. Researchers at the Georgia Institute of Technology have painted the Mona Lisa on a substrate surface about 30 microns in width. That's about one-third the width of the average human hair. Which is one of mine because it's getting a little thin up top. The Mini Lisa not only drove pun enthusiasts into a frenzy, but it demonstrated a technique that could be used to nano-manufacture devices. The image was created with an atomic force microscope and a process called thermochemical nanolithography. Look at that thing. Looks not cheap. Going pixel by pixel, the team positioned a heated cantilever at the substrate surface to create a series of confined nanoscale chemical reactions. By varying only the heat at each location, researchers controlled the number of new molecules that were created. The greater the heat, the greater the local concentration. More heat produced lighter shades of gray, as seen on Lisa's forehead and hands. Less heat produced the darker shades in her dress and hair. Each pixel is spaced by 125 nanometers. One day, the process may be capable of patterning gradients of other physical or chemical properties, such as the conductivity of graphene, which, according to associate professor Jennifer Curtis, should enable a wide range of previously inaccessible experiments and applications in fields as diverse as nanoelectronics, optoelectronics, and bioengineering. The SR99 tunneling machine, also known as Bertha, has started her two-mile journey through downtown Seattle with her five-story tall cutter head breaking through the north wall of her 80-foot deep launch pit. Big Bertha is expected to re-emerge in 14 months. She'll push slowly at first, digging about six feet per day, but by the end of her journey, she'll be chewing up 35 feet per day. According to the Washington State Department of Transportation, 
The project was designed to have opportunities to test the machine and make sure Bertha's functioning properly before she heads downtown. If Bertha was learning to ride a bike, this initial section would be her training wheels. The tunnel is scheduled to open in late 2015, and if you're interested in checking up on Big Bertha's progress, check out our tweets at BerthaDigSR99. Like this gem, this is what delicious looks like, or about to start tunneling, I should say something profound, something Neil Armstrong-ish. Fortunately, I'm out of characters. Let's dig! This industrial rig is not just a hoss, but she's a wordsmith and ridiculously unfunny. Do you have story ideas? Comment below and we'll cover them in an upcoming episode. For pd and TV, I'm Chris Fox, and this has been your Engineering Newswire. And I like to kick straight.